Today we're going to be calibrating our pH monitor for our hydroponic system so we can make sure that our water has the correct pH level. This is a brand new VivoSun meter that I just received from Amazon. Um, I will put the link down below in the description box if you'd like to purchase one if you're thinking about getting into hydroponics and you want to check the pH levels of your water. When you receive your pH monitor, you're going to receive some solution to help you calibrate the pen. It needs to be calibrated. You're going to receive three different solutions. A pH 6.86, a pH 4.0, and a pH 9.18. I will put the pictures of those up in the corner above there. Now you want to have 250 milliliters of distilled water for each solution as well as a, a container of water of distilled water with no solution so you can rinse off your calibration unit in between dipping it into your solutions. So in my first cup here this has to be done in a specific order. It has to be 6.86, 4.0 and then the 9.18. So starting here on the left, we have our pH 6.86. I already have the solution in my cup. I'm going to give it a stir and you want to stir it until all of the solids are mixed. And it's okay if it takes a little while, but you do want to make sure that it's all mixed up. And then I'm going to rinse that utensil in that clean water there. Next, we're going to mix our 4.0 into our distilled water. I'm going to make sure you get all of the solution in the cup. And we're going to give that one a stir. And while we're waiting for this one to dissolve, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start our 9.18 in this container here. Now it's important that you keep your packets with the correct unit of water. You want to make sure you don't mix them up because this does have to be done in a specific order. According to our instructions, our water needs to be at 25 degrees Celsius, which is approximately 77 degrees Fahrenheit. It's not that warm here today, so I'm just going to go off of what the temperature is we have right now, which is about 20 degrees Celsius, and what's really nice is on the back of the packets, they do have a conversion chart, and we know that according to that chart, uh, 20 degrees Celsius is going to be about 68 degrees Fahrenheit, which we're very close to. So we're going to go with the 20 degrees Celsius measurement. So to calibrate our pH monitor, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the end cap and set that aside. We want to turn our unit on. We're just going to put it in our distilled water just to rinse it off because I did try this in some of our well water before I knew I had to calibrate it. So after we dip it in, we're just going to lightly dry it. We do not want to dry up in where this testing element is. You can see it up in there. We just want to dry the outside off lightly. You want to start out with the 6.86 solution first. It goes in a specific order, the 6.86, then the 4.00, and then the 9.18. Now keeping in mind, we're using this at a different temperature, so we're going to have to use the conversion chart. So it tells us that at 20 degrees Celsius, we're going to be looking for a 6.88 result is what we want. You see two buttons. The top one is your on off and your bottom one is to calibrate. We're going to put this in the water 
and we're going to press the calibrate button for five seconds. One, two, three. Oh, it says end. We'll take that out. I believe it said 6.87, so it was very, very close to the 6.88. Do not turn your unit off. Do not turn it off. Now what we're going to do is we're going to rinse it in our distilled water. And we're going to lightly dry it off. Okay, now we're moving to our second solution. And at 20 degrees Celsius, we are going to look for 4.00 on this one. So again, we're gonna put this in and we're gonna hold down for five. One, two, three, four, five. It says end, and it did say 4.00 before it said end. So we know now that that one is correct. Again, we're gonna rinse this off and lightly dry. Now going to our last one, the 9.18, according to our conversion chart, at 20 degrees Celsius, we are looking for 9.23. This one's a little different. We're going to put this in, and it's going to dance around quite a bit with different numbers. And then once it kind of settles down a little bit, then we're going to press it for the five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. It says end, and it was 9.18. Did not quite go to the 9.23, but I think we're gonna be okay. So that's it. Once you're done, you're just going to rinse this off at one final time, lightly dry it. Put your end cap back on. Make sure it snaps because you want to keep this in a airtight environment so it keeps this a little bit moist in there. And then turn your unit off and you're calibrated. Now, to follow through, we have some water that we're going to be using for our hydroponic system already poured out into a measuring cup. We're going to see how our pH is to know whether we need to pH up or pH down. So what we have here is we have some water that we picked up that has been put through a reverse osmosis. We went and picked up 10 gallons to fill up our floating lettuce garden when we're ready to go ahead and put our seedlings in, but I need to make sure I have pH balanced water to even start my seedlings. Don't look at what I've got going back here. This is just a little experiment with some lettuce that we already ate. So we're gonna turn our unit on. I'm gonna stick it in this water and see what we get. We're looking for something that's gonna be between 5.5 and 6.5 in order for us to start our seeds for our lettuce. And it looks like we're at about, oh, 5.99. So it looks like we're in the right range. I don't have to do anything to this water to start my seedlings. Again, now that we've used this unit, we're just going to lightly dry it off, put our cap back on, and store it away where it can stay safe. It does come with a nice little case that it stays in. I'll return this to its case, and I'll keep it underneath our hydroponic station in one of my storage containers and we're ready to go. I'm going to get my rock wool out. I'm going to get my seedlings started. So come back for that video. Thanks for joining us here at Country Mama Musings and I hope you'll come along with us on this journey as we attempt to grow lettuce inside year round with a floating lettuce garden. Bye-bye.